Chapter 9 Returning to the fire, she knew she should be embarrassed for being gone so long, but she felt his warmth. They were finishing dinner, and Hal was the first to notice her return. There she is. You sure took a long time taking care of business. The twins were next to him and quickly shushed him. Everyone had smiled at his comment, but more out of embarrassment for what he said than in teasing her. Callity quickly approached with some food and explained, We decided to stop for dinner instead of making any more mistakes. Are you doing okay? Surprised at, at how okay she was, she smiled. I am. Thank you. Sitting down, Callity updated her on what she had missed. I'm not sure if you saw what happened after the explosion, but another turn was used, so we have two less chances. We tried to talk about what to do, but realized it was best to take a break and eat something. Callity hadn't sounded resentful or even mentioned Hal's name when she said another turn was used. Very peculiar. Standing, Rome was about to get everyone's attention when Callity whispered, Are you finished? Nodding she was, Callity took her plate before she could stop her. Not liking to be served, and remembering Callity had also taken care of breakfast, she reached out to grab her, but Callity dodged her and smiled. Realizing she was not listening to what Roan was saying, she turned her attention to him. Harma and Larsh are facilitating this challenge, but have asked that we all contribute our ideas before taking action. Harma and Larsh, if you'd like to read the instructions, we are ready to discuss it. They both stood, but Harma read the instructions. She was so lovely. The fire seemed to glow on her beautiful olive skin and dark hair. Harma was the prettiest girl she had ever seen. She is beautiful, isn't she? Callity said as she sat beside her. Incredibly beautiful, she responded. It's easy to see why Larsh loves her. There was no malice in Callity's tone, but the slightest touch of sadness. I better stop talking so we can concentrate on the instructions. So, what are your thoughts? Harma asked. Grateful, Tide had asked for it to be read again, she focused on what Harma said. You ended the day in great success. The sky celebrated day one of your quest. You must not move forward alone at this time. The order is changed, but must be intertwined. Two, close to each other, must be tied in knots. They may look similar, but they are not. Now, two are left to finish the job, bind them together to throw on the log. She had never cared for riddles, as she felt they took too many liberties in making assumptions where she preferred facts. Okay, what do we know? Harma asked. We know that the two close together are not us, or maybe we didn't tie the knots in the right order, one of the twins said. Maybe it's Roan and Callity. Tide excitedly exclaimed. Maybe, Roan conceded, but maybe it's not people at all. What else can we exclude? We know we can't just braid them and toss them in, Hal said dryly. But I think you were right about braiding them, Harma said, as she pointed out the word intertwined on the paper. Grade spoke. Riddles have many layers. Can we hear it again, line by line? Sure. The first line is, you ended the day in great success. Karma read and then waited for comments. Does anyone see any clues in that line? Larsh asked. As no one did, Harma continued. The sky celebrated day one of your quest. Maybe it has to do with the Somna moon, one of the twins proposed. It could, Grade said slowly. But when put with the first line, it might mean something else. She smiled to see how well-received his, his feedback was to the twins. She doubted anyone else's answer would be seen as so wise. What do you think it means? The other twin gushed. Maybe because it talks about the end of the day and the sky so close together, it means something about the sunset, Great offered. The twins' accolades burst forth as they praised his intelligence. She watched Grade shrink back from the intensity of their praise. Roan asked, Did anyone notice the sunset? She was sure Grade had, but he looked like he was done speaking, so she volunteered. 
It was pink and orange. Excitedly, Hal rushed towards where the ribbons were. Right behind him, Tide exclaimed, Slow down, Hal. We don't have any pink ribbons. Momentarily crushed, Hal looked at the ribbons before excitedly explaining, But we have orange ones. Laughing, Harma read the next line, You must not move forward alone at this time. Hal groaned, I know, I know. Continuing, she read, The order is changed, but must be intertwined. Does anyone know what order it is talking about? Larsh asked. One of the boys, whose names she didn't know, surprised her by saying, by suggesting, Maybe Tilly knows. She got us across the bridge in the right order. Surprised he knew her name, and feeling bad she didn't know his name, she didn't know how to address him. Good suggestion, Pete. Maybe there is a clue from the previous challenge, Roan said, turning to her for a response. Realizing they were all contributing, she began to answer his question. The instructions on the bridge did build on each other, and they did mention doing things in order, but I don't see how that helps here, unless we are supposed to stand in a certain order. Grade surprised her by speaking again. Maybe not standing in a certain order, but maybe it's referring to the order we received the ribbons, as we suspect the orange one was singled out already. But we didn't get the orange ribbon first. We got the yellow one, Pete replied. Yes, Harma explained excitedly. It says the order has been changed. Everyone started to chatter about getting that far and started proposing their ideas. Good job, everyone. This is very exciting, but I don't want to miss anyone's ideas. So let's talk one at a time, Roan said, quieting everyone. Smiling mischievously, Callity ra raised her hand and asked if they could hear all the clues again. What are you smiling about? She whispered to Callity. Nothing, Callity whispered back. Harma began to read. You ended the day in great success. The sky celebrated day one of your quest. You must not move forward alone at this time. The order has been changed, but must be intertwined. Two, close to each other, must be tied in knots. They may look similar, but they are not. Now two are left to finish the job. Bind them together to throw on the log. What are you not telling me, Callity? She whispered once Harma was done reading. Nothing, Callity giggled. I just like it when I start to understand something tricky. What are you understanding? She tried to pry more out of her. Cal, Larsh called out. You have always been good at riddles. What do you think it means? She was surprised to see Callity's eyes fill with tears, but more surprised to hear what she said. Hold on, I'm going to sneeze. And with that, she made a suppressed sound. Oh, excuse me, she said, smiling and wiping her eyes. I'm not entirely sure, she continued. But I think the two that look similar and get tied together are the yellow and orange. But the green and turquoise are also similar, one of the twins volunteered. Yes, they are, Callity responded. And I did think of that, but it says two are left. And we already know the orange is first and most like yellow. So I think it's orange and yellow that get knotted together, and then the green and turquoise are left to be braided into the orange and yellow string. Everyone looked impressed. Plus, Callity continued, we know the order is supposed to be changed, but they are close together. I think it has a double meaning. They are close in shade, but we receive the yellow ribbon first, and then the orange ribbon, which puts them together in the order. Spontaneous clapping started. <clears throat> she thought Callity would be very happy with herself, but when she looked at her after everyone started talking, she was surprised to see her look so miserable. What's wrong, Callity? Callity smiled a huge smile and replied, Nothing. I think all that thinking hurts my brain. Most of the group had gone to look at the pile of ribbons and had started experimenting with them. She watched Callity walk to Harma and share the paper with her. She realized she had misjudged Callity. She knew when people pretended and why people pretended. She had seen the sadness in Callity's eyes when she said how beautiful Harma was. Looking at them next to each other, Callity was not as beautiful as Harma, but she too was beautiful. She knew Callity was not bothered by Harma being beautiful, but rather that Larsh loved her. 
and that Kalidi believed he loved her because she was so beautiful. Harma and Kalidi had joined the group by the ribbons, and step by step, they were reviewing the clues as Hal tied the orange and yellow ribbons in knots, and then braided the green and turquoise ribbon with the knotted ribbon. She looked at the empty logs and noticed that Grade was still sitting. He looked puzzled. She thought about asking what he was thinking about, but decided against it. Hal triumphantly led the procession to the fire and threw the braid in. The fire seemed to grow immediately, and an image started to form in the fire, but quickly died away. We must have got it wrong again, Hal cried out dejectedly. No, Grade said, now standing. I think we have it right. I think we just need more time for the image to show itself. How do we get more time? Tide asked. Oh, it's like fire, Hal shouted. We need more wood. Not wood, Calady laughed. More ribbons. Everyone was now huddled around the ribbons, but their shadows were preventing them from telling the colors apart. Okay, Roan suggested. How about we stand around the fire so we can all see, and Larsh and Harma hand out the ribbons for us to put together? How about I read and let Har Larsh and Calady hand out the ribbons, Harma asked. Great, Roan replied. Everyone went to stand around the fire happily talking to each other while Larsh and Kalady collected the ribbons. She was standing closest to them and could see their shadowed faces as they collected and sorted the ribbons. It was hard to see by firelight, and Larsh had accidentally taken a green one thinking it was turquoise. Kalady laughed and reached to pull it from his pile, and in doing so knocked several ribbons loose from his hand. They both reached to grab the falling ribbons, and in the process, Larsh's hand brushed across Kalady's. Kalady recoiled back and let Larsh gather the fallen ribbons. She busied herself straightening the yellow ones. Standing, Larsh smiled comfortably at her and held out the rogue green one. They began offering one of each ribbon to those around the fire. Their backs were to her, but she could see how rigidly Kalady was standing. We won't have enough ribbons, Larsh announced. Larsh and I can share. Once I'm done reading, we can throw ours in together, Harma offered, making Kalady wince almost imperceptibly. That's a great idea, Roan added. And maybe like the double meaning for the order of the ribbons, there is a double meaning and two close together. So Kalady and I can share as we are siblings. That's wonderful. We can share too, one of the twins suggested. Do we need that many to share? Hal asked. Yes, Gray replied. We have an uneven amount, so we need three to share. Is there anything else we are missing? Tide asked, sounding worried. What about the part about not moving forward alone? Pete asked. It started to work last time, and we were all together then, Hal said. That is a good question, though, Pete, Roan answered. Maybe we should read it again to make sure we have everything. She knew she and Grade had not been with the others. They had been sitting, but she stayed quiet. Harma read it again as they listened for things they might be missing. You ended the day in great success. The sky celebrated day one of your quest. You must not move forward alone at this time. The order has been changed, but must be intertwined. Two, close to each other, must be tied in knots. They may look similar, but they are not. Now, two are left to finish the job. Bind them together to throw on the log. Okay, I think we have everything, Hal said. I think so, too, Pete joined. How about we start? And if we are wrong, we can change it, Hal asked, anxious to see the clue unfold. How about we start, and if we are wrong, we can change it, Hal asked, anxious to see the clue unfold. If we start and are wrong, we might not get the answer we need for what is next, the boy who was always with Pete had spoken up for the first time. Hal was tired of talking and said, I think it's all right, the way it is, and we should just throw the ribbons in and see. Yeah, Tide agreed, let's just start and see what happens. I'm with Tide and Hal, Pete said. Let's just start. Should we take a vote? Roan asked. Everyone was in the affirmative, and Roan asked, Who thinks we should start exactly how we are? Hal, Pete, Tide, Harma, Larsh, Jasp, and one of the twins raised their hands. Okay, Roan said. It looks like we are staying where we are and starting. Celebration hollers came from Hal and his group. The boys who were most eager to start were all on the other side of the circle from her. When he was done handing out ribbons, 
Larsh had gone to stand by Herma, and Callity had gone to stand by Roan, as she knew they were a group. Jasp was next to Callity, and the twins were on her left, leaving Grade on her right. Harma began to read the riddle as they followed the instructions to knot the orange and yellow ribbons together to become one ribbon. Next, they braided the knotted ribbons into the green and turquoise ones. Not everyone knew how to braid, so many helped each other. Knowing the twins would know how to braid, she looked to see how Grade was doing. He was almost done, but looking at his hands, she noticed burns all over them. Not wanting him to know she was staring at his burns, she said, I'm surprised you know how to braid. Yes, he responded. I make candles. That's great. She could hear the twins beside her comment excitedly that he made candles. This was the closest she had ever been to him, and she noticed his clasp catch the light of the fire. It was in the shape of a mountain. Okay, I'm starting, Hal announced, and meeting no opposition, he threw his braid into the fire. Everyone stepped forward to see the fire start to dance. It moved majestically, and right when it looked like it would reveal something, it started to shrink. Quick, throw yours on, Hal said forcefully to Pete. Immediately, Pete added his to the fire, but the fire began to shrink. Did you braid it wrong? Hal said, leaning to look closer. I don't know, Pete replied anxiously. Tied through his end before anyone said anything, and the fire began to swell again, but again it only swirled, revealing nothing. Harma and Larsh threw theirs in as Tide's fire began to wane, but again, instead of growing, the fire almost went out completely. Thinking they should stop and consider how they used the rest of the ribbons, she started to speak when Grade stopped her. Let it be, Tilly. Looking at him, she knew she was missing something and turned her attention back to the fire. Roan and Callity's fire dance mesmer danced mesmerizingly, but nothing was shown. Jasp threw his in as their fire began to lessen, but did it, it did not grow or go out. Worrying there were only three braids left, she looked at Grade, but he shook his head no, and she hoped he knew what he was doing. The twins threw their braid next, and the fire split immediately. One side grew large and twirled, and the other side shrank. Watching the one side twirl and trying to see if anything manifested, she forgot she was next, and the fire started to shrink as Hal yelled, it, yelled out, Quick, Tilly, throw yours in! Responding to Hal's directions, she pulled her arm back to toss her ribbon in. Grade grabbed her forearm and quickly took her ribbon from her hand. He tied the ribbons together and threw them in the fire. Shocked at the speed at which he had acted, she watched their braids catch fire. They swelled to the size of the others, and in the twirling was an image that looked like a small leather bag. As the image of the bag began to disappear, a word she did not recognize flickered, and then too was gone. Hoping for another image to appear, it did not, and where the ribbons had been, there was only regular fire. What happened? Hal asked a little too loudly. The fire calmed down everyone but Hal, and he looked at everyone for answers. He was by far the smallest and youngest in the group, and not from Wistira. Looking at him, she wondered if his parents knew he had come. Frustrated by everyone's reflective state, he walked in, fr in front of Roan and tried to shake him. Severely misproportioned, he pulled on Roan's arm when his shaking failed. Roan shook his head as if waking from sleep and seemed to notice Hal for the first time. Hey, Hal, how are you doing? I'm upset. That's how I'm doing, Hal retorted back. What's wrong? Roan asked, concerned. Hal's back was to her, but she knew he was giving Roan a look of disgust as he said, We failed. We did not get any help from the fire, and Divya has not come to give us any instructions or ribbons, so clearly we messed up. Everyone seemed to be coming out of their temporary serenity, and she wondered why those not from Wistira had been less affected. It's okay, Hal. We will figure it out. Roan tried to soothe Hal, but Hal was not interested in being soothed. Hal asked Harma and Larsh what they thought had happened, but they too were unable to give him a satisfactory answer.
Roan suggested they all head to bed and discuss their options in the morning. Everyone but Hal was grateful for the suggestion. He was only more perturbed. Exasperated, Hal turned to her and Grade. What happened? Why didn't it work? It's okay, Hal. It did work, Grade said quietly. Hal looked incredulous. No, it didn't. Give it some time. And with that, Grade walked off.